Hey YouTube, welcome back to another RC Wars video. Today we're going to be talking about torque arresters. I just wanted to talk briefly about torque arresters. Um, that we get a lot of questions about whether or not you should or shouldn't use them and I just wanted to kind of address some of those concerns um, as well as kind of talk about if you do decide to use a torque arrestor how it works uh, and how to properly install it in your well. So before we go into putting this thing in this piece of pipe here that we're using as a simulation well casing uh, I just want to talk a little bit about well, uh, torque arresters, all right, so when it comes to torque arresters, uh, basically the rule of thumb or what they're designed to do is to absorb the torque of the motor as it engages. So a pump typically or a motor starts in or spins in a counterclockwise motion, which means it torques the other direction or in a clockwise motion. So when you're using standard right hand threads, it's actually going to act as an unthreading the pump. So if you don't have your pump tightened on well enough to your drop pipe, your pump could actually torque and spin off of the pipe altogether. However, on lower horsepowers, when you're dealing with one horsepower or less, or even up to two, three horsepower, torque is not a huge or significant factor. Uh, like for example, with a one horsepower motor or less, Franklin Electric recommends that you torque your pump end onto your pipe with at least 10 pounds of torque in order to prevent any problems of the pump actually being able to unthread. So 10 pounds, that's really not a lot. And that just kind of goes to show that if you're dealing with less than a one, you know, or, or I guess if you're dealing with one horsepower or less, uh, you really shouldn't be concerned with torque in any case. Just make sure your fittings are nice and tight from the well pump all the way up, 10 pounds, and you should never have any problems. Of course, a lot of people do use safety lines, so if something does fall off, you can always retrieve it and it's not lost forever or you're not stuck pulling it out by the wire. Um, so those are just things to think about. But when you get into larger pumps, one and a half horsepower, two horsepower, uh, and bigger, and especially if they are in situations where they're shallower, surprisingly the motors in shallower sets are actually going to have more torque than in a deeper set because the load is different on startup. You have a heavier load on the motor when it starts up in a shallower situation than when it starts up in a deeper situation. So with all that in mind, if you're using plastic drop pipe, such as PVC drop pipe, and you've got, let's say, a one and a half or two horsepower motor, it might make sense to use a torque arrestor to absorb some of that because when you're tightening things onto PVC, it's easy for the PVC's composition to not really achieve that, that 10 to 20 pounds of torque you know you may achieve it but it could potentially loosen over time it's plastic whereas with a steel fitting steel galvanized pipe you're never really going to experience it loosening up on you uh, over a period of time or becoming brittle um, but i tend to think personally that torque arresters are relatively unnecessary in most situations because let's just take a second and talk about pvc drop pipe pvc drop pipe most of the time, so I think one uh, one inch is rated up to, it actually says rated up to, I believe, one or one and a half horsepower. Um, an inch and a quarter PVC drop pipe is rated up to, I think, two horsepower. Maybe it's one and a half. Um, so there's limitations, and they know, they put those limitations on there specifically because of the torque, and they know that, that can be a problem. So tightening your fittings all the way up and down is going to be crucial to ensuring that nothing's going to fall off. And again, if you are achieving the tightness that's recommended by the manufacturer, you really shouldn't need a torque arrestor. I guess in most cases, it's gonna give a person peace of mind. Now, if you're in a situation where you have an extremely deep well, three, four, five, six hundred feet deep, and you've got a two horsepower motor or greater on there, um, using a torque arrestor probably isn't a bad idea because um, you're not gonna have a ton of torque as, this, as if it was a shallow set, but you're gonna have a lot more play in the piping because the longer it gets, the more movement that's gonna be attainable even if you are using rigid pipe. So there are some circumstances where I will recommend them, uh, but in most situations, I'm gonna say you don't need a torque arrestor. There is another purpose that torque 
snorkel resters do serve though, in a lot of situations where you've got a deep well, it's really a challenge to drill a well that's perfectly straight. And oftentimes wells will kind of migrate to the left, migrate to the right. And what a torque arrester does is it keeps your pump centered as you're lowering it down the well and helps to uh, ensure that that pump the wires more importantly are not going to be rubbing against the casing or the rock or in most cases when you're that deep it's not cased all the way down so you're you're trying to protect the electrical cable more than anything uh, from rubbing by keeping that pump relatively centered so that's just another thing to consider so let's grab this torque arrestor here i'll show you this is a, a six inch piece of pipe so this is basically perfectly sized for this pipe it goes up and down with ease so you're not going to worry about it getting stuck or necessarily making a challenge for getting the pump out of the well. Uh, but when we go to rotate this, it's going to catch. So it kind of catches and it's going to help to, whoops, it's going to help to absorb some of that energy. And uh, when it's wet, it's going to work even, even better. But you can see that it's, it's going to catch on there and help to absorb that energy. Now, another thing that we do, because we don't often use torque arresters in our installations, uh, only in rare circumstances, we use a thick pipe tape. Uh, it's a 10 mil tape, extremely thick, heavy duty, and we wrap the heck out of the pipe for about two to three feet above where the pump threads into it, and about, um, all the way down, about halfway down the pump between the pump's intake and the top of the pump's discharge. So we go up all the way down to the pump and then back up to the middle with that wrap. And that wrap really helps to kind of act as a torque absorber by preventing the pipe from really being able to move in that particular joint, which is usually your most critical joint because the farther up you get, the less the torque is going to kind of have an effect on it. So uh, when you're putting a torque arrestor in, sometimes you want to make it really tight so that you know you don't get any movement, but you're going to have a real tough time pushing that down uh, the well, or you're going to have a real tough time pulling it out of the well. So having it sized just properly is going to be critical. So um, in a lot of in a lot of ways, I think that torque arresters are pretty unnecessary. That's just my personal opinion, but I do think that there are rare circumstances where they make sense. So I would love to hear anyone's opinion or experiences with torque arresters um, and see if, if anybody's got any cool stories to share. So thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. We'll catch you next time.